indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry, I was in a going here. <laughs> How are you? Hey, good evening and welcome to the September 19th, 2022 Board of Selectmen's meeting on the agenda tonight. Will we please have a moment of silence for those suffering from COVID, the war, the fires, and the floods. Okay, thank you. Okay, then we will have public service announcements. We have a presentation of a gift to the town from OSV. We have a continuation of a public hearing for Concord Brewery Incorporated doing business as Rapscallion. We also have a continuation of a public hearing for class two and class three dealers license from Kerboy Auto Inc. to Braca LLC slash IAA. Town administrators update department reports from the water and sewer. We have several action items. Um, common victual license for Guido's Brick Oven Pizza, Inc. Change of manager for the Kahula from Kim, Kim Chen Chan to Stephen Chan. Action for the board to authorize the chair to execute the contract with FNN Con Tractors, LLC, in the amount of $31,000. $297 for the Town Hall Storm Window Project. We need to ratify discussion and action to ratify a stipend for the Finance Director. This, we need to have a selection for the Board of Selectmen Rep to sit on the Housing Partnership Committee. Consideration and action to appoint Larry Morrison to the Personnel Committee. Action to appoint Paula Copaz, PhD, to the Sturbridge Lakes Association Committee is the Lead Mine Lake Association Rep. Action to reappoint Tom Chamberlain to the Trails Committee. Action to accept the letter of resignation from part-time firefighter Anthony Gianfrido. Action to accept the donation the amount of $200 from CMG Environmental to the Sturbridge Fire Department consideration and possible action on the application for a transient vendor license for Wendy Collins slash Collins gift for the Doll and Bear Show at the Sturbridge Host on October 2nd. And we did have a last minute application for a Hawker and Peddler license from Alexandra Avalis. Is that how you say your name, Alexandra? Avalis, okay. Then we have old business, new business, correspondence, approval of minutes, citizens forum, and then we have a request for executive session. So, public service announcements. Jamie, anything? I have none. Mary? No. Chase? I have none, thank you. I have none. I have none, other than another reminder. We've been getting a lot of them about the pumpkins are coming Saturday. Okay, now we have Chris Thierry from OSV. Chris? Do I just put this? Uh, no, it's just on. Okay. Excellent. Oh, wow, you guys are a high tech. <laughs> well, thanks. I'm, um, on behalf of uh, Jim Donahue and everybody at Old Sturbridge Village, we, you may have known we've been commemorating our 75th uh, anniversary now for, for a year <laughs> because, uh, well, not only with COVID, but we just felt it, was, it deserved a year-long celebration. And I'm here today to present a gift from the village to the town, um, just commemorating our partnership and how great um, we've worked together and how great you've always supported the village throughout the 75 years. I don't know that any of us were actually around when the village opened, so that was in 19, uh, 1946. So I want to um, just show you this redware pottery that our potters built, this uh, did on their wheel, and um, redware is the, the, um, the common um, material used back in the 1830s, but for our um, anniversary, they were playing with other different glazes. So if you go into the store, you might see the red glaze, but um, this past year we've had all different kinds of glazes. So this one's sort of more of a mustard color. Oh. So I'll just kind of... 
great. That's oh, beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. No, very Do we nice. Get an individual one too. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's worth more no, than fifty. <laughs> to see but thank you to everybody for all the support you've given the village over the years and we're hoping for another uh, 75 more so well thank you Chris and the village has certainly been good to the town also great, great. it's a two-way street <laughs> so right. tell Jim thank you I will I, I will well the, we wrapped up with uh, the officially wrapped up with the gala in um, June and it was like the best attended gala we have ever it was had. awesome yeah it wasn't it it was under the it was called gala under the stars and it was right on the common at the village which we've never done before huge tents in fact we had to get another tent because there was such a, a cry for people to come so we really appreciate the support but awesome and come to our Halloween program phantoms by firelight it's gonna be fun <laughs> okay. Thank thanks you. Chris, thanks, Chris. Thank have a good night Thank you. okay it is where are we gonna put it Oh, we'll figure out. I've had the pleasure of looking at it for about a month in my office. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a spot. I said, oh, I think I officially have to because we have to because we have a smaller plaque for the town's 250th in the office. Yeah. Oh, we did. So we'll uh, we'll find a spot. Beautiful. Robert will clear her desk off. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll make room for that. That should go on the first floor somewhere for a while if we can at least. Right. Put it downstairs yeah. somewhere. Okay, so we do have a continuation of a public hearing for Concord Brewing Company doing business as Rapscallion for a change or alteration of premises. Okay, would you like to come down please? As a follow up, I believe the planning board approved this change. Yes, they only had one stipulation on an, uh, another thing, the dumpster. Yes. But Okay, would you please explain for the audience at home what it is you want to do? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So the entire project is that we want to um, open the downstairs to be able to serve at our downstairs bar. Um, we are currently already open upstairs. And we also are asking for patio seating, for 24 patio seats. And to do that, we will be putting in um, fencing for the ABCC and also safety fencing around the patio seating to protect the patrons. Okay, now when you say patio seatings, mm -hmm. um, the front patio yep. already has mm -hmm. some. Now, what are you talking about for the side patio? So there, so the side patio, if you, if you look at the side of the building, so where the parking lot is, on the side you can put some small picnic tables or two top tables but it is close, closer to the cars that are parked there. So we're going to put bollards in uh, four and a half feet apart. The parking spaces are nine feet wide. So they'll go at the corner of the parking space, in the middle, and at the edge. So there'll be three bollards per parking space. And then we'll have um, actually wooden fencing connecting those as well. Okay, now I noticed um, on the letter from planning board, it says, um, can accommodate 24 patrons, but your rough sketch shows 28 seats. Uh, uh, is this parking? Uh, the no, seats. Oh, oh, the patio seating, correct, correct. Uh, well, which is it, 24 or 28? I think uh, it's, it's 24. 24 mm -hmm. should be what we applied for. Yep. So which on the sketch are you not going to do now that I can't find the sketch? <laughs> Does anybody have their sketch? Page 26 and 27, as long sketch as I have. No. Right here, mate? Yeah, this is, yeah. This is the one we have with um, six tables of four and then two tables of two. So if you're only going to have 24, you have to eliminate one right yeah our architect might have placed an extra one by accident so we'll make sure that is accurate or he draws like me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he did in all fairness to him he did have to edit it quite a few times so it's we'll cut him a little slack <laughs> and is the building inspector satisfied with the bollards and the fence in between 
Yes, it's, when we met with the planning board, we went through all of that, and they were fine with that. We actually had to submit and explain the entire thing, how deep they were going to be, where they were going to be placed, and they, they approved that. Right, because we've been waiting a long time for this information. As a matter of fact, I'll add a caveat to that. Too long, mm. you know. Yeah, we're sorry we missed the last meeting. It was a miscommunication on our part. But yeah, but the, this has been going on well before that. I mean, the planning board expected to see you people in January, right. and we got your application originally in July. So, right, right. I think everyone was stretched a little bit then, and that's sort of they've added some personnel, myself included. Yeah. yeah well, I'm just, that, so. I'm just expressing. <laughs> I can my, I can assure you that this will not happen in the future. No, I'm just we'll expressing <laughs> my opinion because we do have to look out for the safety of, course, of the public. Of course, you do. And they have been drinking outside with no protection mm -hmm. on the driveway side so you have liability insurance but the town is also liable right. if we know you're serving and we continue to let you serve so mm -hmm. right. just to get that off my chest no and so honestly so i saw your your comment in the paper and that's actually what i said what what is this and it sort of just brought it all back so i actually appreciate you making that comment because it brought it to my attention and we were able to take care of it yeah, so thank we you will be, and we'll be taking care of this within one month we already have the spray paint they've already come dig safe has already been so we're already moving very quickly to get those bollards into right. place and planning board will check it out yes <laughs> okay shane um so i don't know why the i was curious how to keep the balls in Yeah, they were looking at it today, Dig Safe and uh, Spencer Paving, you know, Warren. So he'll be doing the work and he's already um, visited. And so I think it's going to be um, two to three feet deep into the ground and then three feet high. Yeah, it's so two feet deep. And right it's too close. So we've at, we were actually talking about that before we right. came here and it is going to move a little bit. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we are. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> we don't want a lot of fountain. <laughs> no, we do not. <laughs> Especially not now. Questions, comments from the board? Mary? Um, yeah, I just have a comment. I, I, mean, I agree with Mary that right. she's right. But I do want to say I'm so happy that you decided to stay in Stirbridge after you left the Highland location. You have a really popular yeah. spot, and residents really do love having you right there. Right. So I'm glad that you stayed in Sturbridge. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We, no, and we was, love Sturbridge. So. <laughs> it was a, a long search. It's, it's been years because we knew Highland had a, a, a limit, you know, a time period that we were going to yeah. leave. And, and we were a bit down and out there during COVID. Like, can we find the right place? So we're, we're thrilled it's to find it. It's Yeah. And to renovate an old 1800s barn, Yeah. Um, we enjoy projects like that. and. You know, and it was a great project, and it's people enjoy it. So, and and as OSV here said, you know, we're they're such a huge part of the town. But I can speak on behalf of the hospitality venues. That's a huge relationship. Oh yeah. Um, we just we we uh, we host so many people that are in town for Old Silver yeah. Village, right? And, they, yeah. and vice versa, if they're in town at a hotel and they're asking us what to do, so um, direct them so there. It's yeah. a, no, it is. Yeah. That's what the town's about, working together. Yeah. Absolutely. You know. And Surridge is unique, and, you know, I'd say this to so many people, 50, 60 of the establishments, most of them are independent. Mm -hmm. You really can't get that, you know, a thousand hotel rooms or somewhere around there, and it's, it's a unique arrangement. And, uh, I mean, besides going to maybe Northampton or Worcester, you really can't get that right. destination-type town besides here, you know. And, yeah, no, we're fortunate. Hope you stay as busy as you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else on the board? Okay, this is a public hearing. Anyone in the audience have a comment or a question? Okay, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. We have to take a motion. We have to take a, yeah, but I mean, you're. You don't have to sit there. <laughs> you, you can tell. <laughs> Sorry. I will, I will uh, make a motion to approve the change or alteration of premises. Information has laid out in the application before us uh, at 484 Main Street uh, for Concord Brewing doing business as Rapscallion. I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Thank, okay. you Thank you very much. Yeah. Michelle <laughs> has to send it to ABCC and, and then we'll come back yes. and we'll sign. 100%. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, it's still past the time, so we can. Uh, Next on the agenda was a continuation of the public hearing for a class two and class three dealer's license from Kerboy Auto Inc. to Braca LLC slash IAA Corporation for 71 Mashpog Road, Sturbridge. Um, did everyone just get that um, email? Yeah. Okay. Um, my feeling on this is I would like to close the public hearing and deny the transfer and have them reapply. No one is here from them. We have no more information. The only information we got was from uh, mm -hmm. their lawyer who just said they wanted to go ahead with the information they had provided before. And as you know from conservation and other people, there were things missing. So that's my thought on it. Anyone else's thoughts? I totally agree with Mary. I think we've been more than patient and the information's just lacking. I mean, I'd go a step further and say it's entirely inappropriate for them to make an application, not communicate for us for two months, and then all of a sudden just send an email the day of saying we're not Only doing Only because it. they were asked. Yeah, to. And, and the reality is, is the people came here, mm -hmm. put their time in to come to this, they cared about it for their, their neighborhood, and it's unprofessional. Uh, it, it makes me think uh, more ill of the project than perhaps I would have just uh, uh, natively, uh, you know, just said from base, and if they come forward again, they better have everything prepared. Okay, so does someone want to make a motion then f to close the public hearing and deny the license transfer? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, Robin, you'll let the... Yes. Well, you know. <coughs> okay, thank you. A town administrator's update. Um, just uh, one, one brief thing. Just want to inform the board. I had mentioned this actually to Selectman Dunnigan. Uh, I was approached by a pastor of a church in Charlton, who is looking to get street hockey boards and establish an area where we could have a regional street hockey league. And I reached out to Selectman Dunnigan because word uh, through the grapevine is that uh, he's active in, in adult Split. hockey leagues and whatnot. So. Um, uh, he confirms that there is a need for this. I, th I thought it was great. I think there'll be interest from some of the hockey families for their kids for a, uh, like a rec program or something like that, and that there may be things beyond that. And it does just make more opportunity for our rec department. I know they had attempted it in the past, and it didn't catch on, or there wasn't as much interest as they thought, but I think hockey has grown a lot since that last attempt. So, so I'd like to, if, um, as long as the board's comfortable, just draft a letter of support to the pastor. Um, because what I've suggested to him, he wasn't sure of where to go to funding, so I gave him some ideas on going to the state legislature for earmark uh, grants, for example. I spoke to him uh, about possibly going to his labor unions throughout Charlton. Some of the local labor unions might support this. Some of the leagues might support this. So I gave him a few ideas on funding sources, but if he does do that, particularly for the state legislature, um, I didn't know if, it would be, if the selectmen would be comfortable having a letter of support saying Sturbridge supports the concept because our residents would be able to use. I did confirm with him there would be no price difference for usage for Sturbridge residents versus Charlton, for example. It would be equal access. Uh, he would also open it um, some nights to open play, so pick up games and things like that. So if the selectmen are comfortable having me draft a letter that I can bring in front of you to, to vote on once I draft it, um, that he could just keep as he's looking for grants. Right. No, I'm sure we'd all like to see the letter. And as far as support, support of the concept, because I mean, there's a whole ball game of where, when, who's going to run it. And, and Annie, later. Annie, uh, Annie sat in with me uh, on the meeting. Um, she indicated that from the recreation side, it's absolutely something she thinks would be beneficial as well. Yeah, and I think it's great they're not going to favor Charlton or Sturbridge. Yeah, that was important. I said, you know, I said the only way we can publicly yeah. support if, if you're asking him, because he has different state reps than we do, I, I believe. So, um, you know, if we're going to sort of do this crossover support, there has to be equal access for us. 
and most most of the kids that play hockey from Sturbridge also play with kids from Charlton, Oxford, the whole area, because most of them have to go to Marlboro or Auburn to play. So nice. Yep. Okay. So that's it for okay. me. Okay. Department reports: water and sewer. Shane. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so I'm going to start with um, on day 10th of this year, I attended the uh, Massachusetts DEP award ceremony on behalf of the town. Um, in Veolia Water, the Water Department was uh, recognized for the third time in the last nine years for outstanding um, performance and achievement. Um, there's two sets of the plaque, and I wanted to give one to the board tonight. I got one in my office, so I'd like to do that right now. Okay, thank, thank you, you, and congratulations. Oops. Um, I'll jump right into the monthly reports, and I'll just get to the, you know, the most glaring issue is obviously we're pumping a lot of water, and um, it's, we haven't pumped as much water probably um, since when I first started here, and you know, 16 years ago. But we got a lot going on too. You know, we got two 500,000 gallon storage tanks now up off of um, Route 20 and up on Pickle Road, and we got the the uh, RV park, and they're using quite a bit of water, and, and we're in the middle of a drought. Right, people are going to use more water, and down at the job on Route 20, the Sturbridge Big Dig, they're using a lot of water because they're backwashing their filter to, to treat the water they got to pump over. So, um, it is eye popping. It's a 40% increase from you know what we were using last year. But um, we watch the way the tanks fill and the way they drop, and I believe it's legit legitimate use. I don't think we have any big leaks or anything like that. So, I figured I'd just get right into that and point that out. Um, with that being said, if there's any other questions on the monthly reports, I'd be more than happy to answer them right now. No, I'm glad you explained that because it was quite a bit of 32.4% from last August, so that's, yeah. it's quite a leap. Yeah. yeah. Okay, questions from the board? And, and it's actually a good thing, right? Because we need the revenue. I so, know, we get that. Um, as long as I can account for all the water at the end of the year, which we're usually under three percent, which is well within the limit. Um, I think that you know we'll be fine. I believe that I'll be able to do that. I just where where are we at with the large capital projects, the generator and the and the filter tank and the other stuff? So we've met with the engineers. We've gone over everything, and we're waiting for proposals back from them. So um, and here's the thing, right? There's so much money out there right now that the engineers just are so busy. So getting them to respond. So um, we are working on it and making some progress. We actually had another uh, meeting with one engineer on the Stallion Hill tank, because that's some work we're going to have to do up there in the future. And we met with another engineer today on fixing the concrete repairs at the wastewater plant and doing the coating work. So we're, we're working on it. Um, the Maple Street stuff, too, is that's moving forward. Um, but there's some things that need to be taken care of with the grant money. So that's probably not going to happen until spring at the earliest at this point. So, so things are moving along. Good. Okay. Um, after Mass DOT got done paving Route 131, I was not happy with the way the sewer manholes were left and the Watergate boxes. Um, I wrote an email to Heather, who forwarded to DOT. Emails went back and forth between us and the contractor. Um, Heather backed me the whole time. We finally had a meeting with Mass DOT last week, and they will be coming back to repair all the manholes and bring them up to grade and take care of those issues and also fix the Watergate boxes. Uh, we have to provide the structures, which we've had all along. Um, and it's just something we just weren't going to let go because, you know, anyone that drives down 131, it's, it's horrible. And it's not, we shouldn't have to tolerate that. So uh, Mass DOT committed to come back and fixing them, and they will be doing that before the paving plants close this year, is what we were told. <laughs> okay. So that should, you'll see them out when you see them coming back. Um, we got one or two that we got to fix that did we really, was it really our fault? No. But... And to give a little, take a little. So we get a couple. We get to fix ourselves on the water block side, but the manholes is all on them, and they will be coming back and taking care of those issues. So um, I'm, I'm happy about that. 
Very happy yeah, I'm, you know, so, yeah, and you know, especially people on motorcycles and it gets mm -hmm. wet, and you know, and then the other thing too is the trailer trucks stop pounding those, and then they end up breaking, and then you're out there in the middle of the night, and someone's car hit one. So um, I was glad to see Mass DOT own, own up to it, and you know, they got, like I said, they, got, they said they're gonna come take care of the problem. Um, water band, obviously, we're gonna stay in that till the end of the month. Um, that's what we're required to do by permit. We do, our wells are doing well, they're recovering well, even though we're pumping all this water. So um, we'll probably come out of the water bin in the beginning of October because I want to get out and start flushing hydrants. And then uh, I know it sounds early, but preparing for winter. So we'll be, uh, we'll be doing that in early October also. And besides that, it's pretty much been business as usual. So that's pretty much all I have for you this evening. If I could add, I'd, I'd like to thank Shane and Heather. Um, they took me on a tour of all the water and sewer facilities. Um, we, I think we have a, went to every sewer pump station. We went to all the water. She went to the water plants and the sewer plant. And the sewer plant. And, um, and really, it's an amazing operation. It's a, it's a solid operation. But it also gave me a chance to talk to Shane and look at what, on a five-year horizon for water. capital, we need to really sit down and look at to make sure it stays as, as solid as it is, um, because there are some areas that that as you mentioned the water tank up on stallion hill um and some of the issues potentially in the sewer plant but um we'll sit down and, and really work going through with heather now that heather's on board and, and got her feet really wet as well yeah uh, on a long -term and actually plan. the screen is finally in came back from the manufacturer that's scheduled to be put back in next week and then uh we'll probably have to pull the other one out and budget to repair that one too so uh everything's moving forward it's just to get anything nowadays just takes so long it just mm -hmm. it prolongs the projects forever but that's just that's just the way things are right now everywhere and with everything yep, yep. everyone should take that tour uh, you, you should because to understand how the process works and to understand why sewer rates are sewer rates and water rates are water rates there is so much complexity uh, so much environmentally that has to be done properly to preserve the environment, particularly on the sewer, the wastewater end of things. I mean, when you're talking about water going back out into yeah. the system, what has to happen and the importance of that process and getting clean water out of your force, it doesn't just happen by accident. Right. Um, I think we, we've turned water on and we flush toilets and we really don't ask ourselves what? <laughs> where it goes. It, we pay the sewer bill and we kind of, uh, here's another bill, another tax. Um, but it really is something to, to look at. And I, uh, I, I just thought, I mean, on a personal front, I, I think wastewater to me, uh, weird as it sounds, is fascinating the whole process is amazing and has to be done so accurately so okay. precisely um so yeah people should everybody should take that tour and, and take a look well there's at exactly been a couple of times in the past i don't know if you were here shane when they did have open houses for the general public yeah um we've had the schools come few through a few times yeah. i know yep. uh, chase has toured the wastewater yeah plant. and then there was one time that all the selectmen were invited and Which so you know it's not, it's well, not a bad idea for people to really because, understand it's... Yeah, because Governor Duvall came out for some special thing on He came it out before we started the upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, so... so Very good water. Some, Having some radio. No aftertaste. Good water. It's good water. <laughs> she just has it in a bottle that it's... it's no, 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 this is a, it, Don't test the pee fast. Don't, don't test the no, pee fast out of the yeah, bottle. Yeah, no, it's garbage <laughs> tap water, but I've, I recycled, you know, yeah. I recycle. And that's, and I, yeah. I guess I should have mentioned, it up. <laughs> we've completed the PFOS testing. Um, we're, we're good on that aspect of it. I think we have to repeat one that we did in January because of a detection limit issue, but right now we're not showing any PFOS and um, just some neighboring towns that have that issue and I know it's costing them. Let's just be glad we're not going to go down that millions road. And millions of yeah. dollars to remediate. So, um, yeah, millions. The, the, just so people are aware, the Massachusetts legislation on this is so much more restrictive than what the EPA even suggests. It's literally a drop in an Olympic sized swimming pool for lack of, I mean, Shane, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, it's, it is. it's it, so it's, minimal and it's less than what you get probably out of that Poland Springs bottle mm -hmm. if it gets hot. Yeah, it's pots. You're in pots per trillion now, not million per trillion. So um, it, it is strict, and those are the rules. And I, for one, am glad we don't have to go down that road. And I think the rate pay should be too. <clears throat> Huge. Okay. Anything else from the board? Thank you, Shane. Hey, thanks. Have a good night. Thank you too. Yes, you too. <clears throat>
Okay, next on the agenda, we have a request for a common virtual license for Cheetos Brick Oven Pizza, Inc. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Hello. Teddy's not here. No. Um, <laughs> well, we've done common virtual licenses without the proponent. Okay. However, when he mentions a patio, I, for one, would like to see where the patio is because he already has his liquor license. Well, we can always make it contingent upon getting it because he's not ready to open yet. So, yeah. I mean, if we so vote. Okay, any questions, comments from the board? Someone want to make a motion then? Sure, I will move to approve the common victualler license for Dito's Brick Oven Pizza Incorporated, uh, contingent upon receipt of the plan for the outdoor patio. I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action on the change in manager application filed by Chung May Incorporated doing business as the Kahula Restaurant from Kim Chuen Chan to Stephen Chan. Good evening. Good evening. Now, is this the original change of manager that was applied for? Original as in as many in years what? ago? No, a couple of months ago. Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Because I thought it, the last name was different. Oh, okay. Thank you. I read too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, I'm here. I guess our previous manager um, since COVID has left us, and I am uh, the restaurant's owned by my family, my mother right now. So I am here back to take over the business, I guess, or to run it. And I guess we need to make the change of manager. To right, me. <laughs> right. And um, will you be serving any of the alcohol too as you manage? Serving as in my, me, myself, or um, if need be, but mostly uh, I'm going to oversee. Okay. Are you TIP certified in that I case? I am. Okay. And I assume all your help is too? Uh, yes. I have to double check with them um, because we just hired three new people since we closed down we lost our bar manager who's been with us for over 30 years 40 years and our other head server retired everybody basically was in management position retired so that's why it took us so long to open back up and we op um, have yeah three new bartenders so i know the head bartender is um the other two i have to double check yeah now who's the head bartender uh his name is steven simpson yeah, see, that's the name I thought. <laughs> He's tip certified. He's worked plenty of places. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. That's fortunate you were able yeah. to fill those three. Yes. Because a lot of restaurants are having difficulty. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. kind of tough, but yeah, we're happy okay, we did any it. Any questions or comments from the board? I would like to add, uh, Health Department is meeting with them this week. Um, I guess uh, Ken had a few questions. And is going to go back, and, and but you weren't there, so he's right. going to meet uh, this week. So we will follow up as well with that. Okay, that's their purview, and yes. not ours. <laughs> yes, I want to give you an update. No, it's nice to know. Trust me. Okay, someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the change in manager application filed by Chung May Inc. DBA Kahula Restaurant from Kim Chan Chang. To Stephen Chang. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. Good All luck. Set. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, a lot of people are glad you're open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are too. It's a yeah. 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 I can, can imagine. Yeah. Good luck. Okay, next is consideration and possible action for the board to authorize the chair to execute the contract with FNN Contractors, LLC, in the amount of $31,297, 
for the town hall storm window project. So we did a bit opening on this. Um, these are a little bit over budget. We may be looking at different funding sources down the road, but the contractor was the low bidder on this. So. Um, we noticed tonight there were no screens on these windows. Do you know why? No, I don't know why. These? Yeah. Did they have them before? We had them open before. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, but I'm surprised because they're relatively new windows. <laughs> Robin, it says in the in the note that it's, that this bid is under the budgeted amount of thirty two six. Oh, I'm sorry, this one was okay. Yep, yeah, we okay. had a nursery. I'm sorry, we had another bid opening that sure. same day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. Yeah, because it was budgeted. I think yeah. thirty two thousand. Yes. Okay, questions. Sorry about that. We had two open that night that day. Questions, comments? Motion? I will move to approve uh, the contract with FN Contractors LLC in the amount of $31,297 for Town Hall Storm Window Project. I will second that. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, next is consideration and possible action to ratify stipend. For the finance director so i had a bit of an emergency situation over labor day weekend um we had a large number of school hirings coming come in and as you may or may not know we had a brand new person start about a week or two before in the finance office and the other position is vacant um, so there has been nobody for about a month who knows how to do payroll for the town as a whole, and Barbara has um, obviously had to learn the nitty gritties of it. She understood conceptually how it works, but she had to understand, uh, get into to actually do the payroll itself. So she spent a good portion of Labor Day weekend in doing payroll and uploading all the new hires from the schools. Um, we may have one or two more weekends um, where this happens because she's coming in on the weekends to do the payroll portion. We have advertised the job. We've had several applicants for the job. I believe she was going through to try to set up some interviews for this week. So we're kind of behind the eight ball because um, it's, it's um, I realize that the finance director's position is a salaried position. Um, and typically we do not give stipend to salaried employees. However, given that this is another full-time position that's not full and she's trying to get this done so that we make payroll. Um, which I really kind of don't have a choice but to make payroll. Um, we're in sort of a challenging situation. Um, it's a little uncomfortable because we don't give salaried employee stipends and we have other people who work uh, a huge number of hours. But this situation's been a little bit unique because it's actually a position that is vacant that the work has to get done. And it is a completely separate position, let's say, from what the finance director would normally do on her, any of her day-to-day -day work. I do have a problem with this basically because when you're a salaried position, you're salaried to do a job. It doesn't matter how many hours it takes or how few hours to take takes. We went through this once before when we did totally have a vacant position in the accountant department. Mm -hmm. This time though, the people have been in there. It wasn't totally empty positions downstairs. She's also, I believe, hired someone to come in and help. Yes, We're that person can come Tuesday afternoons and Friday afternoons. Yes, so mm -hmm. I personally am going to abstain from voting on this. I think it sets a bad precedent for the other salaried employees. There are a lot of salaried employees who do a lot of extra work mm -hmm. and they ask nothing because they understand what a salaried position is just my thoughts anyone else I kind of want to echo your thoughts Mary I I'm concerned about the precedent going forward with with the other salary employees you know for instance you know our town planners come in a bunch of times our town clerk when there's election comes mm -hmm. in building inspector when there's an emergency it, and I think this sets a precedent that I'm not sure we really want to go down. 
and I understood I had asked at minimum at least the ratification of the action for Labor Day weekend. Um, we were kind of in a bind at that point. I had to get payroll done. I um, realized payroll but, had to be done, but did it have to be done that quickly for the new school employees? Well, I, you know, I spoke to the superintendent, and she said, well, some of the new ones could wait. Um, but they did get on the payroll in time. I just, uh, I, I, I kind of felt it in a position with payroll, if it's not going to get done in time, particularly over that weekend with Monday being the holiday, I was, I was in a little bit of a tough situation there. Um, we well, could, I on a go-forward basis, say, you know, yeah. in the upcomings, not. But I, the ratification of the action, I would at least request. Yeah, but I, I you know, there's no dollar amount. How yeah, well, that's, that's, that's going to be my question. I, I don't even know. Two, was yeah, it $2,000? Sure. I believe so. Uh, 2000 or 2100 was the amount. So, I mean, Mary and, and Chase are not wrong. I mean, I know when, you know, everybody has to come in. It is a little different when it, when that job is unfilled right mm -hmm. now who is in that office yes so i wanted to know the amount because it, does that amount take into account that she is going to have help um that she hired i mean yeah. so i guess i'm asking you this you know robin how did you arrive at that amount of money because if i'm in favor of this if i will be prepared in another department if they lose somebody oh. then they are going to be you know, well within their rights to say, you know what, I. So that's I that's, so, and I'll, that's, I'll be prepared yeah. to do that if if I feel like the salary stipend is the stipend is mm -hmm. um, based on something appropriate. You know. So I, I mean, believe the the how did you come the person that came in to help is coming in at a consulting fee of seventy five an hour, and so the finance director put in for a hundred an hour for those twenty hours that weekend. Hundred dollars an hour mm -hmm. for the twenty hours that weekend. That's where the twenty one hundred came from. I I think that this, I I'm not, I don't feel I, I hear what everybody's saying and I tend to agree with them. But I think it's not that I have an issue when someone's short staffed and we have extra dollars because we're not paying someone who's in it mm -hmm. and they're doing something like payroll that has to happen. But it, I, we can't do it ad hoc. It has yeah. to be a structured approach. It has to be like because I, I I'm not I'm not a I'm not against this, but it's just like it's to Mary's points. Like, I, if there's things that you, Robin, deem essential that is, is appropriate, generally, I'd imagine I would support that. But I, I need to have a, a paradigm by which to do that. And I, it's it's a challenge because I can't mandate somebody necessarily come in on a weekend. Um, I and the, it's not that she's not working full days. It, it, it does work hard all day, full days. So the challenge I kind of faced on this, on accepting it on that one, is, okay, the days are full. There's not enough time in the rest of the week to get that done, even with the assistance of the other person. That person did help process. I, I will also say, um, I don't want to get into personnel issues, so we're missing the assistant treasurer's position and then the new payroll position that was sort of needed. The assistant treasurer who left had been doing payroll. Um, there was a lot, as I understand, that was left not completed, that needed to be uh, corrected, fixed, whatever the case may be. Um, and that's what that outside person is doing predominantly, is trying to go through and rectify some of the things that hadn't gotten done toward the end before somebody else left. So it's a little bit of a unique situation and that I absolutely agree. I mean, in the wintertime, a public works director comes in, if we have four snowstorms in a row, uh, she's gonna be here Saturday night, Sunday nights, that's her job, uh, and that is part of it. But in this particular case, because budget-wise, there are positions that are not being paid right now. I'm not looking at a budgetary issue, and I'd have to be paying somebody to do this. I would have had, and frankly, um, to be honest, I don't think she really wanted to come in and do it. It wasn't a case of trying to get oh, no, the money. I asked, I actually made some phone calls. I called my old town to see if they knew of anybody who could come in and do this on a consulting basis. I reached out to four or five people myself to see if we could find anybody who could come in and assist. Would it be reasonable to um, pay her what we're paying the consultant? Because at least in that respect, we have a standard so that if it happens in another department, let's say, I mean, Barbara's an incredible worker, as is G, as is all really all yes, the teams. The teams. Tremendous. But if it happens in another department and they have to hire a consultant, 
then you can at least say, well, you know, we'll compensate you for what we would have yes. to pay somebody else coming in. But to pay a premium, then how are we, you know, justifying mm -hmm. the premium? Because if it's a consultant someplace else, maybe it's only going to be fifty dollars. Or and then why are we going to pay? So then we, what do we do? Pay seventy-five, twenty-five or, more because she got twenty-five more. Or do you agree that it's a straight time if you if you were to ever do that again? That it's simply straight time on that person's hourly wage. Yeah, or whatever well, her I salary think, is. Yeah, but I think that you know right away we're already going to the idea that we're anticipating maybe this will happen with other departments and everything and that's one of the problems i understand you know, and, and i would tell you i've never given i have never given a, a, a stipend to a salary director in the past mm -hmm. i don't recall having ever done that I've ever had this kind of situation. i have not had a situation where i had literally nobody in a department who could do a job who could do a certain i mean this was a little bit unique in that this isn't just a lot of work this is the people who were doing the work are gone and that was sort of where I said, okay, what do I say? I can't mandate somebody come in on a weekend um, when the person's already worked probably 55, 60, 65 hours during the week. Um, you know, I've added, you know, we talked about extra vacation time and things when it, she covered a separate job in an account, which is a totally separate job. But this was a little bit different in that it hit on a Labor Day weekend. It's not work the person really wanted to be here doing. Um, and we needed payroll. Um, I could ask the board to say, that, you know, going forward, it, it's not acceptable in the next couple weeks. I mean, we, I don't know if she came in this weekend to do payroll or not. I think she may have been talking about doing it this weekend because, again, it's not a job that can necessarily get done time-wise during the week. Uh, we are looking at restructuring some of the work out of that office. We're moving the water sewer billing over to DPW to alleviate some of the billing issues that come out of that office because that is a problem time-wise. Um, I just, uh, I just, it's just critical we staff the positions. I mean, That's the bottom line. I, I, in all think, of it. I think a little bit of it could have been avoided, avoided um, planning ahead a little. Um, and I think, you know, with the school people, that it was not necessary to do them right away on they payroll. Waited a payroll week. You know, yeah. I mean, Barbara. That's a little extra she did, but I still am going to abstain on the vote. Well, depending on what the motion is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I we already got you the I position. Should, yeah, I know the position. If anybody <laughs> wants to do a motion and Mary's not going to vote for it, do it. I should say that um, because I do. I mean, salary, salary, was it extraordinary? Yes. Um, could it happen again? Yes. Um, there are a few departments where you know people love to hear this they'll say oh i'm going to be next and so anyways anything else from that end okay somebody want to make a motion one way or the other um i'll put something up there for discussion purposes <laughs> um i'll make the motion that we approve a stipend in the amount of 75 dollars an hour consistent with what we have to pay the consultant and only because there is a vacant position within that department um, and would not support a stipend simply because somebody has to come in on the weekend if all the positions are filled. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, just because, because I am going to try to avoid the situation where someone says, I have to come in on a Saturday and get this done, I'd like a stipend too. It's because it's pretty much empty in that, in that it's, office It's right doing now. specifically, premium, yeah. Usually consultants charge more, yeah. so I can't, well, I just have I think to have you'd, a standard to for payment. phrase it with what I think you're going to go at, you'd have to say to, to specifically do the work of another position. Oh, okay. It's not of a vacant position. Yeah, it's not picking up more of your own. But this, that's the issue, though. It isn't that this in and of itself is a bad idea. It isn't that this wasn't, there isn't a need for this particular type of functionality, but you can't do this and then not consider what's going to happen to mm -hmm. the next part. And I'm not even, I, you know, and I, honestly, I didn't even know what this item was when I read through the packet. I kind of guessed, but I, I didn't know it was something that we had mandated, which I do think is different, that if the town minister is telling you you have to do it, that's different as opposed to picking up another work when you're a manager it's within your normal job being basically forced is being forced 
And I think we have to, I don't, I just don't think I'm, I don't have my thoughts organized on how I'd even frame it. So I'm not really comfortable voting for it tonight. I think we need to flesh out if we're going to do things like this, what that, what that looks like. I almost said what the hell that looks like. I don't know why I got mad. <laughs> it like, didn't sound bad. <laughs> that looked like. Um, but I just think, does that make sense or do I sound? Oh, no, that's reasonable. Robin, I have a question. Did you tell her she had to come in and do the payroll or did she do it of her choosing? Well, she indicated to me that she was going to have to come in over the weekend and that it would have to, there would have to be some compensation for her to come in over the Labor Day weekend. And I agreed to it at that point because, frankly, I need payroll done. Did you agree to her statement amount that you? I did at that point. You did. Oh. Yep. Well, if you, that's I did at that point. But again, going forward. Okay, so we um, obviously really don't have. A this is a ratification oh, we, if, of the if action, we, if but we, if we promised her it and then she yeah, her that's why I was in kind of a bind because it had to go into it went into last but week's payroll, we didn't. and then I realized that it had to but come our, in front. Right, the board does not have did. to, but our, yes. but our agent did. Exactly. We have entered into yes. a contract. So the problem I ran into was yeah. it went into the payroll. It came up on payroll. I signed off and realized I didn't have time after I did that to get it in front of you, which is why it's a ratification of an action. Oh, then I, I, so what I would say is then we don't go forward on any other, I won't sign off on any future ones. If, I mean, if she did come in over this weekend, I have not signed any payroll item for this week. Well, if we promised her, that's an entirely different conversation. I, I thought it was more of a negotiation on the yeah. other side. Yeah. I didn't understand it was mm. the front end. So yeah, no, I, I, I we, and you said 2100? I think it was 2100, I believe it was, tw I believe it was. 2108 yeah, or 21, uh, yeah. So, I kind of... I mean, you were caught, too. I'm not sorry. Yeah, you are our agent. I, I know. It was a, it's a unique situation, and, and the timing on signing on the payroll for that week, signing off on it, initialing it when it came up. Yeah. And, didn't allow for and it missing to come payroll here. comes with huge fines. We get it, Robin. But the, so I'm going to move to approve a $2,100 stipend for... Uh, the finance director, director. Uh, under these circumstances. Under the relevant circumstances. I'll second okay. Jamie's motion. Did mm -hmm. you say you, that you ratified? Let's make sure that ratification's in there because we're approving something that already. Yeah, it puts it on the record that you did not you know choose. To, you as a board did not choose to yeah. do this. Well, absolutely. Okay, ratify the yeah. twenty one hundred. <laughs> I'll still second Jamie's motion. <laughs> okay, any more discussion? All in favor? I still abstain. Your trouble. <laughs> it's my middle name. Okay. okay, next we have consideration in action to appoint. Oh no, we uh, need a selectman to serve on the Housing Partnership Committee. This came up at our last meeting, but we didn't have a full board. So, when when is the when are the meetings going to be? They well, they haven't organized yet. They're still getting. Yeah. Robin, have you had? There's been no um, discussion yet of when that's going to meet or what the schedule is going to be for that. Um, so we've got the representative from planning. We've got a representative tonight. Finance, we'll get right. in from here. We have finances representative. I have not even appointed yet the, I wanted to get these in place and then I'll appoint the uh, and bring them forward to the um, public no, members. No. We have several applications for that to about what five? The three positions? Four, four maybe? Four the three five, positions? Four, five. And I believe I have three three appointments to present to you. So I'm going through those now, but I wanted to at least get the the uh, board appointments. Boards. Okay, is anyone willing? I'll do it if it's. I know Ian is a new baby. Oh, um, good do and I would support president. whoever does it as an alternate. If you can't make a meeting and, and you communicate it to us, I would attend to. Yeah, support. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm bad. Because then Chase just did the TA board. She just did the ARPA board. And Ian's got a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like. No, a baby. <laughs> so now. I want to bring up these ever can be like a rotating seat where we all take a turn. and. and well, stay. you have to read the. I think, it, yeah, I it's think it was hard point to for so every, many year term. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's specified in the, uh, what we ratified at town okay. meeting. Oh, right. Right. So. And it goes back to what we were talking about last week about trying to get these boards and commissions on a cycle. I know. I told Michelle, I'm going to go back a couple of years because in the annual report, it used to have when all the appointments were up. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting all the appointments up at the same time, which was 
never the intention. It was always, you know, this one was this year, that one was next year, two were, even on the elected positions, yeah. the board is that way, two one year, two one year, and one. But now we're getting everybody in September. So I, I told Michelle I'd go back and see what yeah, I could do. Uh, we have to weed through and again talk about the bylaw where we make these all July 1st to July 1st and then stagger the years. Yeah, as, because as that's... Because then that's where the confusion comes in. It's November of one year. It, let's say it's you know November of 22 and, and January of 23, someone else on the same board expires. One's a two year, one's a three year, but the, at what point in the year? Yeah, that's why we had town council's opinion to make it July 1st to... Yeah. June 30th and we'll put bylaw stay. language in for town meeting this year to oh yeah clarify that. but I'll go back and read because it used to be easy to go through that way you knew who was up and when they were up and, and we have a software that's supposed to make it easier and it doesn't <laughs> that's true okay so somebody want to nominate Jamie then I will nominate him <laughs> You're too willing, Mary. <laughs> and I also am willing. If, if I, I'll be an alternate as well. But. No, I can make yeah. it work. I'm flexible. Yeah. I work for myself. So I, I nominate. <laughs> yeah, that's Jamie. right. I nominate Jamie Goodwin. Oh, you work for the town, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I uh, and I nominate Ian, Ian Dunnigan to as an alternate. alternate number one. <laughs> I will second that. <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> All in favor. Okay. See now, even this one, Larry Morrison for the Personnel Committee, he's taken the place of the person that right. was on the Finance Committee <clears throat> that was, and I'm sure her term didn't expire in 2020. It should actually, this should actually expire at the end of her term. What would have been hers? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we might want to just put a caveat on that one. Yeah. That one should expire for the remainder of the of current Joni term. Joni Bright. Yes. Yeah. Joni yep. Light. And then he could be renewed after that if. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, should be because clarified. He's a, that one should be clarified. That's the remainder of the term. Yeah, because he's from the FinCom. Okay, somebody want to make that motion? Uh, sure, I'll move to appoint uh, Larry Morrison to the Personnel Committee for a term to expire. Uh, am I using this date? Or just no, when um, the remainder of the, the term. The remainder of the term. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, for, the, for the remainder uh, of the term. Uh, of Joni Light. Of Joni She's Light, yeah. FinCom rep. Yeah. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, next one is consideration, possible action to appoint Paula Copaz, PhD, to the Sturbridge Lakes Association Committee as the Lead Mine Lake Association representative for a term to expire <laughs> September 19th, 2025. <laughs> it's always the little things that get me. We'll get it strained up, Michelle. Somebody want to make a motion or? Are we good with that date? Or are we doing a different term? Maybe just say expiration of the term. Um, yeah, see, I don't know. Was she filling for someone who left, or was she filling for know. someone whose term ended yeah, and see, they didn't renew? That we'd have to just check. To yeah. Out, yeah. So if you do it the same way, I'll clarify. Okay, if you put those words in then. I will make a motion to appoint Paula Kopas, PhD, to the Sturbridge Lakes Association Committee as the Lead Mine Lake Association representative for a term to expire on a date to be determined. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Okay, the next one is to reappoint Thomas Chamberlain to the Trails Committee for a term to expire. Yeah, so he, he had expired. His should have been a reappointment for a full term. There had been some confusion. Uh, he should have actually, I think, been reappointed before I even came. He expired, I think, in April or like prior to my coming here. And there, yeah, and there had been a, some question uh, about In Mr. Chamberlain's case, could we just make an exception and just appoint him for life? For just because we know he's not going to. Emeritus? <laughs> <laughs> can we, we can always make him emeritus when he doesn't want to be doing No, because he's saying he's moving more right. to. 
But he is still yes, yes. Okay. But he is currently still a yeah. star patrol. So, right. So how about this? Um, I move to reappoint uh, Tom Chamberlain uh, to the Trails Committee uh, from the date of expiration of his previous term to uh, September 19, 2025. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Shifted these. Okay, <laughs> the next is consideration and possible action to accept the letter of resignation from part time firefighter Anthony Gianfrido, effective September 13th, 2022. He's um, moving out of town. Any questions, comments, motion? I'll make a motion to accept the letter of resignation from part time firefighter Anthony. Gianfrido with regret. Effective September 13, 2022. Seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, consideration and possible action to accept a donation in the amount of $200 from CMG Environmental of 67 Hall Road, Sturbridge to the Sturbridge Fire Department. Move to accept the donation of two hundred dollars from CNG Environmental at sixty seven Hall Road with thanks. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Okay, next um, consideration and possible action on the application for a transient vendor license for Wendy Collins slash Collins gift for the Dolan Bear Show at the Sturbridge Host Hotel on October 2nd, 2022 from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Any questions? She's had this for oh, every, yeah, every year for many years. Many years. Yeah. Okay, is there a motion? I will move to accept the transient vendor license for Wendy Collins, Collins Gifts for the Doll and Bear Show at the Sturbridge Host Hotel, October 2nd and 2022 from 10 to 3 p.m. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, and then we did have one that came in today for Alexandra. I'm sorry, Alexandra. Abba. Abba less. Okay. <laughs> for a Hawker Peddler license. Okay. Yes. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm currently working for Trinity Solar, so I would be canvassing neighborhoods here in Sturbridge, going door to door. Okay, and we do have, Miri will explain. <laughs> <laughs> a mask requirement. <laughs> well, while we're still in this kind of fluid state, if, and they're not expecting you, Sure. So if you could approach people with a mask on. Absolutely. It'd be appreciated. Absolutely. Also time-wise. Oh, and time-wise, yeah. Uh, what yeah. <laughs> I know, I refresh my recollection, we do restrict the timing. Is it dusk that we don't want anybody beyond? Right, beyond dusk. Like and dusk is? 7, 6.30 now. Yeah, it'll be 4.30. Okay. Yep, and I have been um, actually going door to door in North Brookfield, same thing until seven o'clock it's going to s very soon be getting dark even earlier than that um if i have an appointment set is it okay to obviously that's meet that's a little that's bit an different. exception yep. that would most be fine. residents don't want somebody coming to oh, their no. door at night nope yes. and i ha i would have an hour commute back home so yeah, i would like to, to avoid of, that <laughs> she wants to get out of dodge quickly yeah, absolutely um, yeah. Yeah, so we put dusk instead of a specific time because sure. it changes. Okay. okay, so somebody want to make a motion to that effect? I will move to accept the Hawker Petter license for Alexandra Avales, uh with a mask requirement and a time restriction of dusk. That Seconds. Yeah. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you for All patiently right. waiting. Mask. Hmm? 
so on top of two, so on top of You're making sense, at least. I love having Bluetooth in the car now, though, because when I do talk to myself, it doesn't matter because you can look like you're on the phone. Good night, everyone. Yeah. Good night. Good luck. Oh, Hope it's not raining on you. Government's going to keep that for a file. Uh, yes, yes, they will. <laughs> yeah. There are probably a few red flags on me already. <laughs> Watch out for that one. Yeah. Okay, old business. Ian? I have none. Case. Uh, the only old I wanted to say, I'm coaching flag football, and I noticed the fields are getting redone with our opera funds. So that's positive news up at Burgess. Yeah, they're very excited moving yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah. That's good. The rain's helping. Yes. Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. the noise I hear on Sundays? That's is that what's noise. going on back there? Oh, yeah. 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 We were here. We had a lot of cheering yesterday, yeah, so which is great because it sounds like everybody's yesterday. getting out and yeah. supporting it, so that's yeah. good. Yeah. Very. I love it. I actually have a meeting um, with the uh, assistant principal. Oh, good. And Annie next week about uh, the major work over Burgess Field. Good. And we did end up supporting, I did indicate that as far as my interpretation was that bases and trash barrels provided they are in the dugout area are part of infield renovations. Yeah, that was an incidental expense. I yeah, think they should have been told. It, it was, and particularly if they're down near the dugouts, that's yeah, part that, of the that, infield. That, yeah. So we're fine. But we will have an interesting meeting. I'm looking forward to meeting with them. I had a nice tour of Burgess School. And, yeah, isn't um, it something? It's beautiful. And so we're going to meet on that field and see what we can do to really enhance that back there. Great. Okay. Anything else, Chase? That's it. Mary? Well, this was something I wanted to bring up, and it kind of refreshed my recollection when we were talking about the finance department having vacancies. Um, for a long time, we had exit interviews when employees left. and. The selectmen would also look at them to get, you know, some input as to why mm -hmm. people leave, you know, just to, mm -hmm. if there's anything we can do better. And I know, I think we probably, Mary was on the board with me when we had it, it because there was a time period when we did have yeah, it quite was, a few exiting. But it was all volunteer. There was nothing when we hired right, somebody. It was a termination or a, yeah, yeah. There was nothing up front that, you know, would you be willing to do an exit yes. interview? But yes. I think it's very valuable. I do know the last one we did, I found very valuable. Yeah, of course, and it is voluntary, yeah. totally. But it just helps us moving forward yeah. when we lose an employee for, that we've had for many years and they take a job someplace else. Mm -hmm. It's nice to know, you know, what was the reason? Was it more money? Was it they just needed a change? Did they not like their working conditions? And all of that is helpful information. So if we want to institute that again, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but. Yeah, I think certainly so, maybe no, uh, presenting them with the option as opposed to them having to ask, they at least are, are offered. Correct, we yep. initiate it. Yep. yep. Okay, Jamie, any old? Nope. I have none. New business, Ian? I have none. Chase? I have no new. Mary? No. No. They can't hear your head rattle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to comment any further. It'll be inappropriate. <laughs> then you'll have the flag. <laughs> then you're going to have My the head flag. Will be rattling. Right and <laughs> I have none. Correspondence? I'm supposed to read it, right? Do we yeah, still get we... a sheet of paper anymore? We used to get a sheet of paper with correspondence. I didn't see any. There was no. I didn't see any. I didn't know, know. there. Yeah. We haven't so. really been getting. We haven't remember anything that, coming in this week no. that I got. Usually, I get in the past, of Michelle. I mean, it's fine if the board doesn't want it. When we have correspondence, we usually just have one page that says to, from, and the date, and just a little oh, okay. subscript yeah. about yeah. what it was. Yeah, so we. Can. Yeah. I keep trying to spectrum changing their rates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, we, when we came back in person, the correspondence just seemed to fall off. Yeah. It seems like there's not as yeah. much going on. Should I take that off the agenda if there, if there is no correspondence? Well, no, I mean, you can leave, no, no, you can leave it there yeah, because, it okay. because one of us might oh, have gotten something for the whole board at the last minute. All get but if we all get yeah. something, you just put it so that yeah. people who are viewing, because those are public documents, right, right. Yeah. and a, a letter might interest them, and they have the right to come in and look at it. Yeah. Just a little more for you to do, Michelle. <laughs> she's 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 our only coach, not salary. She's good. She's good. No, she's good. I know. Okay. Um, I stopped at you, Mary, on new business. I don't have any.
No, we our respondent. Respondent. Okay. Okay. It's not Maybe even eight o'clock. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> citizens Forum, and there are no citizens. So we do have a request for an executive session. Chase, do you have the? We have, a, we have the minutes yeah. too. Oh, from the minutes. Oh, jeez. You mean the ones that are right under my nose? <laughs> okay. Um, these were minutes we held because I had so many picky typos. And I did point out two of them to Michelle, which she's already corrected. It's just the word wave as opposed to no action. And then use instead of us. Yeah, it's okay. But not as in use guys. No, that's why. No, but it was why you see. But it was it was uh, other people. Yeah, other other people us the road. Ah, <laughs> so maybe they do. But okay. So does somebody want to make a motion to approve with those two corrections that were given to Michelle? I will make that motion to approve with the two corrections. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Okay, now. Two abstentions. Two, yeah. abstentions. two abstentions. Lee. That was a real quick meeting. It was. <laughs> All right. It's not a bad thing. All right, so I need it before we need a motion to go to an executive session? Well, yeah. It's the. You want me to read the. Clerk greets. I mean, okay, I'll make a motion <laughs> that we go into executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21, Subparagraph 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Three, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares so and, not, declared. and not to reconvene an open session. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Ian, how do you vote? Yes. 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 I vote yes. Jamie? Yes. Okay.